Hey everyone, it's Vinny. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about a, a dangerous trend I've been seeing going on on YouTube, and that has to do with uh, non-professionals, especially uh, famous YouTubers, using a product called a relaxer. So I want to just touch upon what a relaxer is, what it's used for, and the potential risks um, of it. So a relaxer is a type of product um, a lot of salons, especially ethnic salons, will call them a straightening perm or a perm for short. Um, and that's kind of true because it's making your hair straight, but by technical definition, they are not a perm because a perm is a chemical texturizing service that's actually breaking down 50% at least of the hair's bonds and then reconstructing them. So a relaxer um, is a chemical. It's a very strong chemical because it's got a pH really depends on the relaxer, but the pHs can be anywhere from a sodium hydroxide relaxer, which is a lye relaxer, that could be as high as 12.5 to 3.5. I've heard some other sources say a pH of 14. I haven't seen that, but 13.5 is extremely close. So the advantages of having the relaxer is that if you have very, very curly hair, and I mean like afro-y and frizzy hair, It'll relax the hair and make it permanently straight so you don't have to go in with iron. However, there's a lot of risks in this process. The chemicals, since they are very caustic, you cannot mix them with any other uh, hair color and you never, ever, ever mix a relaxer over bleach and vice versa. People do it. Um, do so at your own discretion because it, it is a risk in doing that. Now, I know some stylists that have been working in an ethnic salon will tell you differently, and at least they have the experience, they know it. If you are relaxing someone's hair, um, whether it be that you're a professional, you're doing it in a salon for the first time, or you're helping a friend, when in doubt, if you feel like you should not do something or you feel nervous, please do not do it, because what could happen with a relaxer is you can cause permanent damage so severe that the hair can slide right off your scalp or you could permanently damage your scalp because with the lye relaxers, the, the proper procedure is that you take a base cream and you never ever ever do a relaxer on washed hair. I've seen a YouTuber do that and that was extremely gut-wrenching for me to watch because I'm like, oh my gosh, like he's really doing it. The, a lot of the YouTubers I've been seeing using relaxers, they've been using a guanidine relaxer, which is actually marketed as a no-lie relaxer. It's usually sold in the drugstore, and you mix two components. There's a special cream, and you mix the chemical in there. Now, I was taught, and this is so true, that no-lie is a lie. The chemicals and the processes work exactly the same as a lie relaxer, but there's a main difference. The no-lie relaxers are marketed as conditioning, and they're marketed as natural or they have organic relax, uh, organic ingredients. That's a play on words because there is no legal definition for a, nat a natural or an organic relaxer. They can still damage your hair because they're all made the same way with the same procedures, the same chemicals. They may have some conditioning ingredients, but on damaged hair, it's going to fry and it's going to melt off. Most relaxers, in fact, contain the same ingredients that are found in depilatory, such as hair removers that would use to remove body hair, the creams that you put on and it washes off. You're putting that on your hair, so just think of what it can do if you leave it on too long. The guanidine, or the no-lie relaxer, is a timed reaction because you're mixing two chemicals. However, the lie relaxer does not stop working. It keeps eating away at the hair, and if you leave it on too long, your hair is going to break off, it's going to dry up, and it's going to stretch. When it's wet, it's going to feel like wet cotton and stretch off. And when it's dry, it's going to feel kind of like Velcro and gross and you can actually tear the hair. Here's the problem though. When they talk about a neutralizer, you don't neutralize ever. You never ever neutralize a relaxer because the bonds are broken and they will not be rebuilt. The bonds that are made with a hair relaxer are called lanthionine bonds. And these bonds that are formed, they... um. They work differently than a perm because when you do a perm, you're breaking the bonds and you're neutralizing to reseal them in. A relaxer essentially is just eating away at your hair, so it's denaturing chemically that protein that's your hair, so your hair cannot hold its curl anymore and it stretches the curl out. When you're relaxing, you never ever make the hair 100% straight because if you try to do that, your hair is going to be a big wad of gum. You make it up to 80% straight, no more.
that's being, you want to be safe. 80% straight is what, even what a lot of textbooks will say for uh, cosmetology. 80% straight is the bottom line with a relaxer. Um, and the other thing is if you have bleached hair, I'll have people say, well, oh, um, I got a relaxer, but when can I bleach my hair? And I'll usually say something like, um, so you want your hair to fall out on clumps? And they look at me like, what? That's true, because I've had friends that, you know, told them, I said, really be careful with that. You don't want to do that. You have two very, part of it is you have two very strong chemicals. You have a, a lightener, which can be a whole pH range of anywhere from like a pH of 9 point something to 10 point something. I think some of them can be a little bit more caustic. Um, with a relaxer, if those two chemicals interact that's on the hair, it's not going to be a good thing either because bleach uses hydrogen peroxide. And like I said, neutralizers that use hydrogen peroxide, you're only going to damage the hair more if you put that on there because it's going to cause a reaction. And there's another type of relaxer. Um, it's essentially a perm, but it's stronger. And it is a thio smoother or a thio, they call them a thio relaxer. Now a thio relaxer is a, a perm essentially. It's just got a stronger pH. The thio relaxers um, are actually neutralized with a neutralizer the same way a perm would be. And they have a pH of above 10. Um, there's a range that really depends on the product and they kind of smell like a skunk. They have that like permy smell that's kind of gross. Um, and with these relaxers, you don't um, you base the scalp. In fact, there was an old way of smoothing out hair back in the day, and that was using um, a perm. You would basically squirt the perm all over, and that was kind of silly because it could have gotten in your eye, but usually uh, have them lean back into a sink, and you just gently comb it through, make sure everything is saturated, and that would kind of, um, you would see the curls just gently relax. And when you got to the level that it would just be smooth enough, you would rinse it out for the five minutes, kind of dry the hair off and put the neutralizer over it, and that would kind of lock the texture into place. Well, the thigh relaxers are nice because it actually can be applied um, with a bowl because they're much thicker, depending on the product type, and you would neutralize over that. Um, so you actually would rebuild those disulfide bonds. And a thio relaxer is actually very much compatible with hair colors and lighteners, and that's the better uh, use of it. So if someone has bleached hair and they want to relax their hair, depending on what it's like, you may be able to actually use a thio relaxer, and that's much safer than going the uh, lye relaxer uh, way or the no lye reaxer. There was a YouTuber um, who they recently put up a video, and I'm not going to name any names, um, and this particular person had used a relaxer over bleached hair, and all of their hair fell out. And that's the reality of it. They should have read the directions because in the directions it tells you do not use unbleached hair. And I think they left it in for something like 20 to 30 minutes. It was something ridiculous. But if you have colored hair and you do relax your hair um, against all advice, you're not going to want to leave it on that long. A relaxer technically should be on your hair and off your hair that quick. Part of the reason, because the chemical works really, really quickly and you have to check, when you do a relaxer, you put it, If let's say I was going to relax my hair, um, I would put it from about here, leaving a good area away from the scalp, from the mid shaft, and leave the ends out because the ends are porous and I have heat from my scalp. So I'm doing the section that's most resist resistant, the mid shaft or the zone two. Then I would go back in zone one, which is the regrowth, put the relaxer all in there, and then I would just use the scissoring effect with my fingers um, with and always wear gloves. And I would just kind of scissor that relaxer down, kind of, you know, getting it in there, getting it over the ends. And then I would just check with uh, a curl test. So I would take a small strand and I would uh, wipe some of it off and I'd see if the curl pattern is still there. So if it was like that, probably I would still relax more. Once I see that the curl pattern is relaxed, I would wash it off. And with the relaxers, uh, you have to try to normalize your hair. You don't, you don't neutralize, you normalize. So basically what we'll be doing is using uh, some kind of acid shampoo that you'll shampoo the hair and then you'll rinse it and that will ne help neutralize the hair. Then after the hair has been neutralized, you style it. Um, generally, uh, I would just roller set the hair in big rollers because the hair's already been fragile. You don't wanna have to go and use a flat iron on that. That's not really a good idea. You wanna treat the hair as much as possible. I have seen though, some people getting really creative and putting bond protectors in the relaxer to reduce some of the damage and that's a very wise idea. So I hope this helped. Um, I, I went on a little bit longer than I thought. So if you have a relaxer or you're going to relax your hair, be smart about it. Read the directions. Do not relax your hair if you've showered that day. You're going to burn your scalp off, potentially causing permanent hair loss. 
And the other thing is uh, with a relaxer, you want to wait a while before washing. So if you're going to get a relaxer, wait as long as possible. The more oily the hair, the better. And I can't even say that. I was going to say that if you have any styling product, a relaxer, pH of 13.5, it's going to eat through anything. So if you have a gel on your hair, chances are that gel is going to be eaten through and gone. So be smart, read the directions, and always seek professional advice, especially for relaxers. You don't want to end up with all your hair sliding off your head. So comment down below. I want to know from my viewers uh, what you guys think, what you guys think of people relaxing their hair at home. And I want to know if you guys have had a really bad experience at using a relaxer or a perm at home. Comment down below. I'd be curious to hear your stories. So I will see you guys soon.